20 teal winners, all under age 20. $100,000 to drop out of school and pursue our dreams. This is Team Technorati. This is N245. It's home to a lot of space scientists, astrobiologists, and some astrophysicists. I used to work in this office in between break times at UC Berkeley. An amusing artifact in here is the Star Trek poster right over there. I find it very inspirational when I'm working in the depths of code, trying to get the modeling coefficients just right. Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, Rebecca. How are you doing? I'm Chris McKay. I'm a planetary scientist here at NASA Ames Research Center. Do you have enough material, physical sample, to do the experiment? <laughs> Plenty. I've got about seven transects worth. Each transect has about 10 to 15 samples. We discussed the samples that I collected in French Polynesia last semester. We're now working on genetic analysis to see what's related to what in these rocks that I collected from the intertidal zone. From my perspective, Rebecca is at a decision point. She's clearly got a capability to do science, but she's also entrepreneurial. She could really be a role model for other women as to what, what possibilities are open. Science is something you can do. Or starting tech companies is something you can do. Through the Teal Fellowship, I now have the time to pursue my research interests as well as my company idea, Honey Badger Aerospace intends to do pre-qualification of small satellites in space before they get to space. Today, right now, uh, we're going to be introduced to Moon Express, which is aspiring to put the very first commercial private robotic spacecraft on the surface of the moon. And by doing so, to change the definition of what is possible. Everything that we care about, fight about, and find precious on Earth, energy, resources, land, territory. It's all available in infinite quantities in space. The first kids born today um, will be looking up and seeing lights on the moon. So as we create space colonies and we learn to live in other worlds, we're not only increasing our survivability as a species, but we're replicating our bases here on planet Earth, which is so far only constrained to one potential point of failure, right? The dinosaurs didn't have a space program. Sure, go ahead. Uh, how, do you, how do you plan about terraforming? I love the idea of terraforming, and you know I've kind of grown up with the idea of uh, you know someday we're going to terraform Mars. But the magnetic field is such that the particles flying off of the sun strip off the atmosphere over time, causing a set of collisions that removes the atmosphere. So what if instead we actually restarted the dynamo? That might be a great idea of how we do that. We use this facility to develop our own engineering tests of our first concept of our lunar landers. We wanted to have a scalable system so we could start small, right, and scale it without redesigning the entire thing as the market responded. So what we came up with was this spacecraft design. We could get all the way from Earth orbit to the surface of the moon just with this little guy right here. At MoonX, I really learned and saw firsthand the need to have this kind of pre-qualification go on before we send something into space. So you can be able to tell the person who's carrying your payload whether it will be safe or not. We've given you a kind of an orientation to SU and Moon Express. We showed you the hover test facility. We saw the mock-up lander. Now you're going to meet some of the really important people behind the vision that's making it happen. Well, let me introduce Andy Aldrin, Buzz's son, our president. Andy, that's the given. The opportunity to come here and actually participate in sending spacecraft to the moon and developing the moon commercially is it, just a dream come true. And I brought uh, Andrew, Jake, and Mike to meet with you as kind of a sample of the younger generation of engineers that are 20-somethings at the same age, basically, as the 20-somethings who created the Apollo program. Uh, I'm Andrew Mitchell. I'm an electrical engineer here. I work in the avionics department. I graduated from the University of Michigan, I uh, worked on CubeSats there for three years, and now I've been working out here, working on some pretty amazing things. I dropped out after my sophomore year of college uh, when I was 20 years old to come work here because I figured uh, 
you know, I, I wasn't going to get this opportunity when I graduated. We all have stories about how our parents reacted to dropping out of uh, high school or college. I'm curious to hear uh, how your parents felt about you uh, joining me. <laughs> My mom was incredibly surprised when I brought it up. Of all the kids that she knew, I wouldn't be the one to drop out of school. Uh, but given, given the opportunity, she was pretty supportive of it. It's all about people and the relationships you build. Um, and you can do amazing things. And I know some of you are space nerds and you're, we're gonna be seeing you again, I know. <laughs> so I've had the privilege of meeting new friends and new amazing people, now I've met you. All right, so let's change the world. It's really cool to see the old space side and the new space side working together. There's crazy things oh that God. happen in the space environment that you, you can't really prepare for, but you've got to try to prepare for it. Yeah, what if you, you could test it in space before you get it to space? That'd be awesome. The company I'm pitching is actually Honey Badger Aerospace. Okay. And ironically, this is exactly what we're trying to look for. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd love to talk to you more about that, especially about the practice of being an engineer at such a company. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at uh, starting hiring over the next sure few months in particular. Cool. I can go and run a, grab a notepad or something and give you a, my email. How many times do you guys get to use Houston We Have a Problem? <laughs> uh, there's, there's too many problems we get tired of. <laughs> Let's go to the moon. <laughs> Let's point up. <laughs> that was really good. Tune in for the next episode of Teen Technorati when Thomas shares his plans to cure cancer. And be sure to subscribe to The Wired channel.